This is the service for October 6th, 2024, the 20th Sunday after Pentecost. And we are starting with hymn 333, Once He Came in Blessing. Once He came in blessing, all our sins redressing, came in likeness lowly, Son of God most holy. For the cross to save us, hope and freedom gave us. Now he gently leads us, with himself he feeds us, precious food from heaven, pledge of peace here given. Manna that will nourish, souls that they may flourish. Soon will come that hour when with mighty power Christ will come in splendor and will judgment render. With the faithful sharing, joy beyond comparing. Come then, O Lord Jesus, from our sins release us. Keep our hearts believing that we grace receiving. Ever may confess you till in heaven we bless you. We are doing divine service setting four found on page 203. We begin with confession and absolution. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. If you, O Lord, kept a record of sins, O Lord, who could stand? But with you there is forgiveness, therefore you are feared. Since we are gathered to hear God's word and call upon him in prayer and praise, let us first consider our unworthiness and confess before God and one another that we have sinned in thought, word, and deed, and that we cannot free ourselves from our sinful condition. Together, as his people, let us take refuge in the infinite mercy of God, our Heavenly Father, seeking his grace for the sake of Christ, and saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Almighty God, have mercy upon us. Forgive us our sins and lead us to everlasting life. Amen. Almighty God, merciful Father, in holy baptism, you declared us to be your children and gathered us into your one holy church, in which you daily and richly forgive us our sins and grant us new life through your Spirit. Be in our midst, enliven our faith, and graciously receive our prayer and praise. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Our psalm for today is Psalm 128. Blessed is everyone who fears the Lord, who walks in his ways. You shall eat the fruit of the labor of your hands. You shall be blessed, and it shall be well with you. Your wife will be like a fruitful vine within your house. Your children will be like olive shoots around your table. Behold, Thus shall the man be blessed who fears the Lord. The Lord blesses you from Zion. May you see the prosperity of Jerusalem all the days of your life. May you see your children's children. Peace be upon Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. We go back to 204. Lord, have mercy, Christ, have mercy, Lord, have mercy. To God on high be glory and peace to all the earth. Goodwill from God in heaven proclaimed at Jesus' birth. We praise and bless you, Father, your holy name we sing. Our thanks for your great glory, Lord God, our heavenly King. To you, O soul begotten, 
the Father, Son, we pray. O Lamb of God, our Savior, you take our sins away. Have mercy on us, Jesus, receive our heartfelt cry. Where you in power are seated at God's right hand on high. For you alone are holy, you only are the Lord. Forever and forever be worshipped and adored. You with the Holy Spirit alone are Lord most high. In God the Father's glory, Amen, our glad reply. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Merciful Father, your patience and loving kindness toward us have no end. Grant that by your Holy Spirit, we may always think and do those things that are pleasing in your sight. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Old Testament reading for this, the 20th Sunday after Pentecost, comes from Genesis chapter 2. Then the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. So out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called every living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man, and while he slept took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh. And the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man. Then the man said, This at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother, and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked and were not ashamed. The epistle lesson comes from Hebrews chapter 2. It is the basis of the sermon. Therefore we must pay much closer attention to what we have heard, lest we drift away from it. For since the message declared by angels proved to be reliable, and every transgression or disobedience received a just retribution, how shall we escape if we neglect such a great salvation? It was declared at first by the Lord, and it was attested to us by those who heard, while God also bore witness by signs and wonders and various miracles and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. Now, it was not to angels that God subjected the world to come, of which we are speaking. It has been testified somewhere. What is man that you are mindful of him, or the son of man that you care for him? You made him for a little while lower than the angels. You have crowned him with glory and honor, putting everything in subjection under his feet. Now in putting everything in subjection to him, he left nothing outside his control. At present, we do not yet see everything in subjection to him, but we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he for whom and by whom all things exist in bringing many sons to glory, should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one origin. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers, saying, I will tell of your name to my brothers. In the midst of the congregation I will sing your praise. And again, 
I will put my trust in him. And again, behold, I and the children God has given me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We sing the Alleluia and verse. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. These things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Holy Gospel according to St. Mark, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Pharisees came up and in order to test Jesus asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and to send her away. And Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote you this commandment. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together, let not man separate. And in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. And he said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. And they were bringing children to him that he might touch them. And the disciples rebuked them. But when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me. Do not hinder them. For to such belongs the kingdom of God. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them to his arms and blessed them, laying his hands on them. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess the night of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead, he ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Our sermon hymn is hymn 542. When I behold Jesus Christ. When I behold Jesus Christ, true God who died for me, I wonder much at his love as he hung on the tree. What kind of love is this? What kind of love is this? You showed your love, Jesus, there to me on Calvary. What kind of love is this? What kind of love is this? You showed your love, Jesus, there to me on Calvary. For me you gave all your love, for me you suffered pain. I find no words, nothing can your selflessness explain. 
What kind of love is this? What kind of love is this? You showed your love, Jesus, there to me on Calvary. What kind of love is this? What kind of love is this? You showed your love, Jesus, there to me on Calvary. You had no sin, holy Lord, but you were tortured, tried. On Golgotha, there for all my sins you bled and died. What kind of love is this? What kind of love is this? You showed your love. Jesus there to me on Calvary. What kind of love is this? What kind of love is this? You showed your love, Jesus there to me on Calvary. What love is this, greater love no one has ever known? My life with God, this I owe to you and you alone. What kind of love is this? What kind of love is this? You showed your love, Jesus Christ, to me on Calvary. What kind of love is this? What kind of love is this? You showed your love, Jesus, there to me on Calvary. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And that is the question, what kind of love is this? We were created by God from dirt. He's the one who breathed and put life into us. He made angels who were spiritual beings living in his very presence. And yet for us, he made a world. Animals to be our friend, plants for us to eat. He created the atmosphere for us to breathe, the atmosphere to protect us from radiation and meteors. He created gravity and all the various things, heat, light, by which we maintain and have life. And he made us so that we would propagate, filling the earth, covering it with children, with others like us. But then we said to him, we're not yours. No, I would rather worship myself. I would rather create for myself beings that I can talk to who can't talk back or do anything. I'd rather not deal with you. I'd rather not deal with God. I'd rather not deal with the persons of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And we rejected you. And we brought about suffering and pain and sorrow because this world is maintained and ordered by you, not by us. We have things perfectly and we are content and we are in bliss when we're living with you and according to your design, not according to our design. So what kind of love is this? That you who looked upon this disgustingness that we had done, this rebellion, this treason, said, I want to save them. 
I don't want to put down like, you know, the old joke about horse doctors. What do they do with horses? Well, they shoot them. We don't want to put down man in the same way. I was talking to the kids in, in the fourth and fifth grade classroom and I said, you know, if, a, if an alligator attacks someone, you just shoot it. But if a cat attacks someone, well, you love the cat anyway. Part of it is the level of danger, perhaps, but part of it is we have a different way of viewing cats than we do alligators. God has angels. They're wonderful messengers, servants of him, created in great glory and power. They're beautifully made. They are art, aesthetically pleasing. They uh, show his creative energies and uh, God's great and glorious might, so they reflect the glory of God well. And yet, when a third of the angels rebelled against God, God didn't say, I want to save them. He said, literally, to hell with you. And he created hell for them. And they were eternally damned from his sight. He didn't treat us the same way. Like the alligators, the angels who rebelled, they were put down. They were not loved the same as we are. God did not create angels in his image. He created them by beauty and order, and he created them in a glorious way, but he didn't create them the way he created you and me. We are created in the image of God, his very children. He had one son from eternity, not created, but begotten. We don't quite understand how you can always exist in that relationship of father to son, but that's what happened. That's what is. But he wanted more children. And Jesus wanted brothers and sisters. The angels were not those children. They're more like wonderful art. We are those children. Now, our text today tells us we should study this and get to know this a lot better so that we don't wander away, so we don't turn our eyes away from the wondrous love of Christ and the gift that he has given and get focused on the things of the world and get distracted by this great creation God's given, this other gifts that have been put into our life, the other shows of glory that we see all around us looking to the tests and the suffering, as well as the beauty and the enjoyment, but not looking to the maker, the creator, and to his son who died and rose to, to save us. And so our text today says, we should look at the extraordinary thing that God did, the sign and the wonders. You know, he did a lot of miracles, whether it's the plagues of Egypt, or, you know, Jonah surviving in a fish and coming up after three days. Or the death of Goliath, the fall of Jericho, Daniel and the lion's den. All wonders that as a child I was certainly fascinated by and as an adult I still look to and am amazed. How did Samson rip a lion apart and these sort of things? He did many wonders. And these wonders had a goal. They had a purpose. They were to take our eyes off of the here and the now, off of the suffering and the pain, off of the great gifts. And they were to refocus our eyes on the maker, the one who put us in this place with purpose, the purpose of living with him and being his child. Kind of like uh, sometimes we have to call our children together and say, it's time to eat a meal. We're gonna sit down and we're gonna eat together. And you're going to stay and talk and you're going to chat and you're not just going to disappear off to play games. You're going to come to this meal, this creation that, that my wife has prepared for us. So God used those miracles to refocus us on him and on his gifts for us. And the Hebrews says properly, the greatest of those miracles, the one that really matters, the one that should really be the one we look at all the time 
is that Jesus, who was higher and is higher than the angels, came down and did the same suffering we do. That he who forgave us, who did the miracle of rising from the dead after he went to the cross, that he went through what we went through and became what we are showing what kind of love is this. It is the kind of love which says, I will give up everything so that you can be with me forever. I will give up my life to save your lives. And then you'll be my family. Now, when we look at that sign, not only does it extraordinarily tell us how God did the thing, the salvation thing, got rid of sin, made us his children, made us part of his kingdom forever. But it also tells us how sure we can be of that thing. If Christ did all this, if he suffered as we suffered, and we know what suffering is, we've gone through it. If he suffered as we suffered, He's not going to give up what he gained by suffering easily. If he's gonna show you love through all this time, he's gonna stay with you. It's kind of like in a marriage. If my wife went through my time with the heart attack and didn't leave, she's not leaving, right? If she's put up with me through thick and thin, she really means to stay. Christ did the thing. He died on the cross. He lived for 33 years as a man going through pain. He was tempted by Satan. He did this, and he did this with reason. Reason was he loved us, and he loved us so much that he died for us. That's the kind of love that God has for us. He doesn't have that for the angels. He doesn't have that for the animals but he does have that for man. And so the kind of love is the kind of love that a father has for his child, that a mother has for her children. It is a sacrificial love. The Sunday school teachers say it's this much, you know, spread out their arms like the cross. What kind of love is this? It's a perfect love. It's a, it's a love which seeks the best for us, even though we sought the worst for him. It is the kind of love which takes those who are down in the dirt and makes them kings and heirs of heaven. In Jesus' name, amen. We join in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your great love that you did not treat us as just anything in creation but as your children. And Lord, that we being your children, you did wonders and signs to hold us in that grace. We ask that you keep our eyes upon Christ so we never forget that great love, so that his grace is not wasted as we realize we are saved by him and we trust in his mercy, in his salvation, and thus live forever with you. Please help your signs and wonders to come and be seen by many that they too might know what Jesus has done, that our family might grow to, to size beyond imagining. In Jesus' name, amen. We join in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. We are going to sing a hymn of thanks, hymn 802, Immortable, immort immortable, immortal, invisible, God only wise. Immortal, invisible, God only wise, 
light inaccessible, hid from our eyes. Most blessed, most glorious, the Ancient of Days, Almighty, victorious, thy great name we praise. Unresting, unhasting, and silent as light, not nor wanting nor wasting, thou rulest in might. Thy justice like mountains high soaring above, and clouds which are fountains of goodness and love. To all life thou givest, to both great and small, in all life thou livest, the true life of all. We blossom and flourish as leaves on the tree, and wither and perish, but not changes thee. Great Father of glory, pure Father of light, thine angels adore thee, availing their sight. All Lord, we would render, O oh, help us to see, tis only the splendor of light that hides thee. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. We do have a closing hymn. It is hymn 712. Seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. Ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and the door shall be opened unto you. Alleluia, alleluia. Man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. of the Lord. Amen.